ESG safety tools. In the bottom pouch, we first have the anti-static wrist strap. This should always be used while working on a device. Make sure the wrist strap is snug on your wrist and pull to tighten it. For grounding to the anti-static mat, connect the grounding wire to the anti-static mat and slide the circular end of the wire onto the ground of an AC power cable. To ground yourself, remove the alligator clip and insert the plug into the ground connector on the anti-static mat. This is an anti-static band. What is it? Why do you need one? How to use it? Well, have you ever come across a sign like this? Attention! Observe precautions for handling. Electrostatic sensitive devices. Electrostatic sensitivity warnings like this are usually found in delicate technology, such as PC parts. What happens basically is your body builds up static electricity from friction, and when you come into contact with sensitive technology, the static electricity causes damage. To avoid that damage, you will need something that kills or grounds the static electricity. The cheapest, easiest and most common method is using an anti-static strap. This device transfers the static energy from your body to the earth. Yeah. So how do you use it? First, you need to wear the strap and ensure the middle part is touching your body. This can be any part of your body. I'm going to be using my ankle. The other end can go into anything metal that is connected to a grounded outlet. Most people just clip it on to their plugged in but turned off PC power supply. I prefer it goes straight into the socket. So what you'll need to do is find a grounded outlet near your workspace. A grounded outlet is one that has three prongs. Then you'll need to plug or clip the other end of your anti-static cable into the grounding hole or pin. This is usually the odd one out. Do not play the guessing game as you could suffer from an electrical shock and possibly die if you attach it to the wrong one. I recommend you find your socket type's grounding hole or pin by using the links in the description. I live in France and I have type E outlets, so that means my grounding connection is the pin sticking out. And bam, I'm grounded. Electrically. The switch doesn't even have to be on. Now I can go back to building my PC. An anti-static bag is a bag used for storing electronic components, which are prone to damage caused by electrostatic discharge (ESD). These bags are usually plastic polyethylene terephthalate (PET) and have a distinctive color, silvery for metallized film, pink or black for polyethylene. The polyethylene variant may also take the form of foam or bubble wrap, either as sheets or bags. Multiple layers of protection are often used to protect from both mechanical damage and electrostatic damage. A protected device can be packaged inside a metallized PET film bag, inside a pink polyethylene bubble wrap bag, which is finally packed inside a rigid black polyethylene box lined with pink polyfoam. It is important that the bags only be opened at static-free workstations. Dissipative and static bags, as the name suggests, are made of standard polyethylene with a static dissipative coating or layer on the plastic. This prevents buildup of a static charge on the surface of the bag, as it dissipates the charge to ground, that is, whatever other surface it is touching. This bridge to ground is achieved with the inclusion of a taloamine on the bag's surface, which attracts moisture that can conduct the charge to another surface, or to the atmosphere itself. In this sense, this type is truly antistatic, in that it hinders the formation of static charges. It, however, is not resistant to electrostatic discharge. If something else with a charge touches the bag, such as a person's hand, its charge would easily transfer through the bag and its contents. These bags are usually pink or red in color because of the dissipative chemical layer. Black bags also exist wherein the polyethylene is manufactured containing trace amounts of carbon, forming a partial shield, though not a complete one. Conductive and static bags are manufactured with a layer of conductive metal, often aluminum, and an electric layer of plastic covered in a static dissipative coating. This forms both a shield and a non-conductive barrier, shielding the contents from static charge via the Faraday cage effect. These bags are preferred for more sensitive parts, 
but they also see used in environments where sparks would be hazardous, such as oxygen-rich areas in aircraft and hospitals. Metalized bags are more fragile than their non-metal counterparts, however, as any puncture compromises the integrity of the shield. In addition, they have a limited shelf life, as the metal substrate can deteriorate over time. These bags are often gray or silver owing to the metal layer, while still being transparent to some degree. Foam also exists in both pink dissipative and black conductive varieties, used for storing individual leaded components by piercing the leads into This is commonly used to cut and bend small wires in electrical wiring, like this. Aside from that, you could also use the needle nose plier to pick up small screws with a strong, secure grip, like this. And you must remember, do not use this plier to cut large, hardened wires and never use in live electrical wires. This is a hack screwdriver, also known as an Allen K or Allen wrench, or nut driver. Its hexagonal tip is used to easily loosen or tighten certain nuts, bolts, and screws. This one is for bolts, and this one is for screw. And lastly, do not over tighten the threads of the bolts. Choose the appropriate size of hex screwdriver to the bolt to work on. a flat head screwdriver. It is used to loosen and tighten negative headed screws. Lastly, do not use this for prying as it may damage a clip or a latch that holds on a component in place like this. This is a Phillips screwdriver. It is used to loosen and tighten positive headed screws. This is how you loosen and tighten screws. When you tighten screws, tighten it clockwise. And when you loosen screws, loosen it counterclockwise. And lastly, Remember, never use this driver for venturing as it may damage its head, like this. This is a wire cutter, and wire cutters are commonly used to cut copper, iron, aluminum, and steel wire, so like this. And you must remember to keep fingers around the handle grip at all times and wear safety goggles to protect your eyes from cut debris of insulation wire. This is a desoldering tool. It's a device used in achieving the removal of solder from a printed circuit board. Soldering iron is a tool used for melting solder and applying it to metals that are to be joined. Remember, do not touch this part because it is very hot. A handheld portable device that is used as an electrically powered light source. So this is used to see objects in dark areas. So this is used to see objects in dark areas. Ideally used to clean surfaces and for the application of products on rough surfaces. This does not ruffle when used and does not leave any mark or residue on the tree. So this is how you use the lint-free cloth. It is very important to use this kind of cloth because it does not leave any mark or residue on the treated surface that may cause the computer not to function or work.
is a multimeter. It measures AC and DC voltage, current, and resistance. During use, make sure that test leads are plugged into the proper jack in order to get an accurate reading. This is how you use multimeter. Put this red jack to positive and this black jack to negative. Hey guys, Brian here from Computer Cable Store and today we're going to be talking about loopback adapters. First thing I want to go over, what is the purpose of a loopback adapter? A loopback adapter is a small device used to test network ports and help identify simple network connection issues. It's a great tool when mapping out a physical layout of a network and quickly identifying active ports on a switch. The device works by taking the transmitted signal and redirecting it, or looping it back, into the receiving end of the same connection. You'll see in the RJ45 Ethernet pinout, the TX and RX pairs are linked directly together so the signal will stay in a closed loop. The same thing is happening in the Gigabit pinout, although that uses all four pairs. For our test, I have a simple network setup containing a run of solid CAT6 cable, which is about 10 feet long. It's terminated with a CAT6 keystone jack on one end and punched down into a 24 port CAT6 patch panel. Then we have a short CAT6 patch cable connecting the switch and the patch panel together. Simply plug in the loopback adapter to get started. Once connected, the status LED of the switch should light up, signaling the connection is active and working. If the status LED does not light up, then you know there is a connection issue and you'll be able to investigate further. So there you have it, that's a quick overview of an RJ45 loopback adapter. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos from Computer Cable Store.